Hi guys, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Belle and today we are going to be talking about some skincare favorites. Uh, before we get started, I want to mention that of course these are my favorites and by no means am I saying that they have to work for you, but I thought it would be fun to share them with you, maybe get your thoughts in the comments and you know start a discussion about what skincare products you guys are using right now. Uh, truth be told, I did film this video yesterday uh, and <laughs> I did not like the way it turned out. So this is the second time I'm filming it. Uh, so hopefully this one turns out better than the first. So my plan for this video is to talk about a few different skincare steps. And in those steps, I'm going to be talking about some affordable products and then some higher end products. Uh, nothing super crazy, but some of the products are from Youth to the People, and then some of them are from e.l.f., so you kind of get that range uh, from like the e.l.f. price range of very affordable to Youth to the People, which tends to be pretty expensive, and, and that's kind of like the ballpark that we're going with. Before we get started, I just want to mention that I have combination skin, so uh, the skin like on my cheeks and on the outer edges of my face tend to get very dry, and then my skin in the T-zone tends to be pretty oily, uh, so I like to use products that aren't too like oil-based and, and work well for combination skin. Also, my skin tends to be very sensitive, especially to fragrance and just uh, Overall, I'm very sensitive to fragrances, so anything with a very strong smell that doesn't dissipate in like the first, I don't know, 10 to 15 seconds just really isn't for me. Um, I think there are some exceptions and I'll be talking about a few of them. Uh, one of my favorite exceptions tends to be a makeup line by Tarte uh, that smells like vanilla and kind of dissipates pretty quickly, so I enjoy the vanilla smell. But for the most part, I try to find things that are fragrance-free, so a lot of the products mentioned will be fragrance-free. Now that we've gone over all that, let's get started. So the first step in my skincare routine is cleansing my face. I do a two-step cleanse, the first step being a micellar water, and then the second step being a jelly or foaming cleanser. Uh, I only have one example of a micellar water that I'm using currently, and that is the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Cleansing Water. This is the all-in-one one that says it has no oil, no alcohol, and no fragrance. So it looks like this. Uh, and I will also be popping in images of these products just in case the camera's not picking it up well. And all of these products will also be linked in the description, so if you're interested in any of them, definitely check them out in the description as well. So this one comes in at the affordable range, being that this one is $9.99 at like CVS or Target, and that's $9.99 for 23.7 actually fluid ounces of product. So you get a lot of product, you can use it with reusable cotton swabs or cotton rounds, um, and it lasts a very long time. So after the micellar water, the next step is a cleanser. Uh, normally I do this step either in the shower or right before I take a shower. Uh, I actually want to note that the, the cleansing water says that no rinse is required, but my skin does not like this sitting on my skin for very long, so I always rinse this off. That's just my personal opinion. My skin doesn't like the feel of it. <laughs> I don't like the feel of it. Um, and so after using this and after kind of wiping off all my makeup, I make sure I rinse this off with water. Uh, that's just my opinion. I know it says you don't need to do that, so that's more just up to you. After that, I move on to the second step in my cleansing process. And the first product that we're going to be talking about uh, is a product that I actually just ran out of and I don't have my other bottle with me. So I'm just going to pull it up on the screen right here. So this is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Hyaluronic Acid Cleansing Gel. This is a six ounce bottle and it is $7.99 at Target and like CVS and other accessible stores. Um, this cleanser does have fragrance in it, so that's something you should note. It has like a soapy, clean laundry type smell to it is the best way I can describe it. Um, and I would say that it feels okay to me that your cleanser has a fragrance in it because you're just about to wash it off, but if that's something you're trying to avoid, then definitely you can try for one of the other cleansers on this list. But uh, I would say this one's really good, and for the price, 
It's pretty comparable to the other two in my opinion with how it makes my skin feel after it's been cleansed. So the next two cleansers on this list fall on the higher end. The first one is the Best Jelly Cleanser and this one is by Drunk Elephant. It comes in this plastic packaging. Um, so this one is some ASMR. So this one is uh, really easy to travel with. I think this one and the Neutrogena one being the two ones that are easier to travel with. And then the last one that I'm gonna talk about is slightly more difficult, uh, but we'll get to this afterwards. This one has a smell of cantaloupe and is a jelly cleanser and genuinely feels really good on the skin. My skin definitely doesn't feel too dry after using this. Definitely feels clean. Uh, I really enjoy this one. Um, and definitely when I'm traveling, I tend to bring this one a lot because it's just really easy to throw into my bag. This one is five fluid ounces of product and it is $32 on Sephora. So definitely putting it into the higher end range when it comes to cleansers. Um, but I would say it's pretty comparable to the Neutrogena one. So if you wanted to, you know, get a feel for what this one would be like, you can try the Neutrogena one first. And then if you wanted to step up your cleanser or even just try a more expensive cleanser, I think this one's a good one to try. So the next cleanser on my list is the Youth to the People Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser. It is a mouthful of a name. Uh, and this one is probably my favorite on the list. It is also the most expensive. Um, for the most part when it comes to purchasing. Uh, normally I buy the 16 fluid ounce one when it is available. They also sell this in an eight ounce one. Uh, something to note is the eight ounce one comes with a pump at the top. Uh, the 16 fluid ounce one, because it is a refill technically, uh, doesn't. So uh, if you want the pump, you could buy the eight ounce one and then when it runs out, you can keep that top portion of it and then buy the 16 ounce one next. Um, or if you're like me and you uh, accidentally disposed of the eight ounce one, so you don't have the pump, you can just pour it into your hand. So that's just kind of what happens, I guess. Um, but yeah, so the 16 fluid ounce one is, I believe it's 64. Yeah, so the 16 fluid ounce uh, bottle or refill bottle of this is $64. The eight ounce uh, bottle of this, which is the original that includes the pump with it, is $36. Um, and this one I think <laughs> smells the best. Uh, at first I wasn't sure, you know, spinach and kale and all that stuff, but it has this really great, um, yeah green tea spinach smell to it. I can't even express like, it smells like a salad and a green tea. It smells really natural. I would say that's the best way to describe it is it smells really natural. And I just love the smell of this one. I just, I can't get over it. Yeah, it's just really great. <laughs> so uh, definitely take that into account that that's what it smells like, uh, pretty much what it's named after. Um, and this one, I think my face feels the best after using this. It feels clean. It feels like I've like cleaned out my pores a bit and I've got rid of some of the oils, but my face doesn't feel stripped or too dry. I definitely like this one the best, but I would also say it's the hardest to travel with because it comes in a uh, glass container. So normally what happens is when I'm traveling, I leave this one at home and I bring one of the other two with me. Um, and then when I'm at home, I'm using this one. And yeah, so those are the cleansers on my list. I enjoy all of them. I think they're all great. Um, if you're interested in any of them or if you have any questions about any of them, definitely uh, comment those questions down below. Uh, and let's move on to the next step. So the next step only has one product in it um, because I newly added this step to my routine very recently. So like a week or two ago because I saw this product and I was really excited to try to add it uh, to my skincare routine. So this is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hyaluronic Acid Serum. And this one is, I think it was $17.99 at CVS. It, it comes in this uh, glass container with a pump at the top, one of those ones where you have to press down and then you get the, uh, yeah, one of the ones that look like this that are kind of annoying to use, but yeah, it's a serum, so I guess they have to do that to us, but uh, I'm really liking this one. I've been using this before my moisturizers. Uh, 
It feels really great. I use a lot of Neutrogena products and this one is fragrance free, which I really appreciate. So yeah, I've been using this only for like a few weeks. So I wouldn't say that I'm 100% behind it, uh, but I really do like it and I thought I would mention it in this video as well. Jumping from serums, the next step in this very simple skincare routine is uh, moisturizer. So moisturizer is really important, especially if you're cleansing. Uh, I don't know if I even mentioned this, but I do only cleanse uh, once a day. So I wear makeup during the day, I wash the um, makeup off with my cellar water, then I cleanse with one of the three cleansers I just mentioned uh, at night, either while I'm showering or before I shower. And then when I wake up in the morning, I just rinse my face with water uh, and then apply moisturizer. I don't cleanse again uh, because I think it strips my skin a little too much and my skin is very <laughs> sensitive. Uh, so I just don't wanna irritate it too much. So I only cleanse at night, I don't cleanse in the morning uh, and I wear moisturizer all of the time. So the first moisturizer on this list is the most affordable. I have three that I wanna talk about. And the first one is the e.l.f. Happy Hydration Cream. This one is $12 at Target. It looks like this. It is 1.7 ounces of product. Um, and I would say that this one is uh, the thickest out of the moisturizers that I'm going to talk about. And it smells the most like lotion, <laughs> I would say like, uh, just the basic, like almost like body lotion smell is the smell I get from this. And so just take that into account because when I first opened it, I was actually pretty shocked by the smell. So I would say that the smell definitely dissipates. It's not gonna bother you over time, but definitely when you apply it to your face, you're going to be able to smell it for like the first 30 seconds to minute or so. Uh, and then it will just kind of dissipate and there won't be any sort of issue. But I do wanna mention that it has like a very like hand cream type smell for a uh, face product, but uh, I actually really like it. Uh, it is definitely the thickest uh, moisturizer that we're going to be talking about. And so I tend to use this in areas where my face gets really dry and not all over my face. Sometimes because it's winter, I use this just everywhere, but most of the time I put it like on my cheek, on my chin, around my mouth, places where my face just tends to get drier uh, as more of like a spot moisturizer than like an all over the face moisturizer. The next moisturizer on this list is kind of in the middle uh, price range, I would say. Uh, where the e.l.f. one is only uh, $12. This one comes in at $16.99, so $17. And it is, how many fluid ounces? 1.7 ounces as well. So this is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream in Extra Dry, and this is the fragrance-free one with hyaluronic acid. Um, and I just wanna point out that this one is the one with the little like white text box. Uh, so this is not the original. So this is the one that says extra dry and fragrance free. The original has like a soapy detergent type smell to it. I used to use that one and then I found this one and I am obsessed with this one. Yeah, it pretty much has no smell at all and is probably the most lightweight yet still moisturizing lotion I have found. So. Uh, I would definitely recommend this if you're looking for something that doesn't feel heavy on the skin, it uh, really absorbs into your skin and you wanna just put makeup or powder or something else on top. I think this one is really great and uh, just really easy, especially like in the summer when you're already kind of like a little oily <laughs> or not really looking for like a heavy moisturizer that's gonna sit on your skin all day. I think this one is really great and just very user-friendly. It has no fragrance, it's really simple, it sinks into the skin, really just easy to use. And I pretty much just use this every day, either in the morning or night or just whenever. I really like this one a lot. I highly recommend it. And at least for me, with pretty sensitive skin, I have no issue with this. The last moisturizer on this list is in the higher end when it comes to a price range. This one is from Youth to the People as well. So this is the Adaptogen Deep Moisture Cream. Uh, this one is two fluid ounces of product and is $58 at Sephora, so definitely expensive. 
Uh, in my opinion, uh, this one is kind of my, my new favorite. I use this one a lot. I really like it. I definitely think that for the price, you're getting a little more. I feel a little more moisturized using this as opposed to the Neutrogena one. Um, and I like the way this sits on your skin better than I do the e.l.f. one. So I think it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's a little more moisturizing, but it also isn't too heavy on the skin. Uh, this one, similar to their cleanser, has a very like earthy scent to it. I think that's kind of the brand, so that makes sense. To me, it smells like a combination of lotion and like mushrooms or something. I'm not even really sure. Yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. Honestly, it doesn't have a bad smell. And I think when I first opened it, I was kind of shocked by the smell. And then after like the first or second use, I kind of got over it. Um, and for the most part, again, the smell dissipates in like, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. So I wouldn't worry too much about it uh, irritating you. Again, my skin and myself included just have a hard time with fragrance. So uh, definitely, I don't think the scent is overwhelming in any way, uh, but just kind of take note that it does have a like uh, natural scent to it. So on to the next step, we are going to be talking about sunscreens. I only have two sunscreens that I want to talk about right now, though I have tried a bunch of them. And if you're interested in a whole video on sunscreen, I definitely am interested in making one and talking about some of the mineral sunscreens that I've tried and the absurd white cast that I've gotten from them. I am not sure how people with a uh, tanner skin than myself are able to use mineral sunscreens. Uh, as you can tell, I am quite pale and I pretty much look sickly and or like half dead, like some walking zombie uh, while I'm wearing most mineral sunscreens. I have the hardest time getting the white cast to go away, and I have tried a bunch of them, including uh, a Tatcha mineral sunscreen, a Drunk Elephant mineral sunscreen, one of the, I think it was like the CeraVe, CeraVe yeah, mineral sunscreen, and all of them just left the weirdest white cast. Uh, so I've gone back to chemical sunscreens, um, just because I, I just can't use the mineral ones, and I'm going to keep trying <laughs> to find mineral sunscreens that work. I also just want to note that uh, one of the products that I was going to use in this high-end uh, sunscreen um, example was going to be the Super Goop one with the vitamin C. That one's pretty expensive and I had just recently picked it up and I thought it would be good for this video. Uh, but I actually did a separate video on that where I talk about why I'm not a huge fan of the product. So I really don't want to include it in this one or recommend it to you guys. It's just not my favorite. So instead, I'm going to recommend these two other products to you that I really like. So the first sunscreen is the one that I use all the time. Just when I wake up in the morning, this is the sunscreen that I put on and I just wear it every day. So this is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost City Shields. This is the water gel sunscreen and it's a broad spectrum uh, SPF 25. And it looks like this. Just so you can compare it, it has the orange box as opposed to the white one for the moisturizer. This product is 1.7 fluid ounces and is $22.99 or $23 at like a Target or CVS. I would say this one is very similar to the moisturizer. It's very lightweight. It sinks into your skin. I feel like I have a good skin slash makeup days when I'm wearing this sunscreen. And uh, as some of you know, or maybe you don't know, I don't wear foundation. I'm not wearing foundation right now. So really what I do is I wear sunscreen or moisturizer, uh, but if I'm going outside, I'd put sunscreen on. And then I use um, some sort of powder. So in this case, it's like the Maybelline transparent uh, powder just to mattify my face a bit. Um, but I don't wear any sort of foundation at all. So because of that, I need to make sure that I'm wearing sunscreen all the time to protect my skin. And so this is my go-to. I really like it. And I just like how lightweight and easy this is. And then the other sunscreen that I wear all the time, and this is the one that I pick up when I am going to be outside for extended periods of time or definitely during the summer when you know you're gonna be outside, going to the beach, going to do something, uh, or even just outside in like strong sun. 
Uh, this is the Hydra Boost Water Gel Lotion Sunscreen in Broad Spectrum SPF 50. So it looks like this. This one is from Neutrogena as well, and it contains three fluid ounces of product, and it is $10 or like $9.99. Uh, and definitely is great. I use this all over, uh, like neck, shoulders, stuff like that as well. Um, but definitely if I'm going outside uh, for a long time during the day, I like to use this one on my face just to make sure I get that extra uh, protection. So the last product that I'm going to be talking about is more of an honorable mention than it is a, a step in my skincare routine. And this is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. This one is in vanilla. I am really enjoying this. I have very dry, chapped lips almost all the time. I use a bunch of different uh, balms and sleeping masks. I use like the sugar scrub and all these different things to try to keep my uh, lips from being chapped all winter. Uh, and I found that this one is just really great. I use it as a balm during the day. I wear it as a mask at night. I pretty much just bring this with me everywhere. This is on the higher end of, uh, you know, lip products. It is $22. So it's kind of like a gloss or like a uh, lipstick in price, but you do get, uh, what is it? 0.7 ounces of product. But yeah, you get a lot of product. I would say that if you're someone who loses their, you know, chapsticks and stuff, uh, like myself, I would, recommend just holding on to this because I don't want to lose something that's $22. But yeah, I really love this sleeping mask. I think it's really great. I pretty much just wear it as a balm or like a chapstick all of the time. Uh, and it's just a really fun like add-on product to my skincare routine, not really like uh, a skincare product, I guess. But, but I do enjoy this one a lot. I would say that the smell of the vanilla dissipates after a few seconds, so maybe like 15 seconds, and then you can't smell it anymore. So if you're concerned about the smell of the vanilla bothering you, I would say that it's not really overwhelming at all. I have tried their lip gloss in Gummy Bear, or like their lip balm, I think, in Gummy Bear, and I actually wasn't able to wear it. I was only able to wear it for <laughs> like a few minutes, and the smell just started really bothering me. I'm not sure if the uh, balm formula is different because it came in a different container, so it wasn't in one of these. It wasn't like the sleeping mask, um, but the gummy bear smell was just too much for me. I wasn't able to use it. <laughs> it just almost like made me sick. It was just so scented, it, it's not for me. So I do find that the vanilla one is pretty easy, uh, especially because I tend to gravitate towards vanilla scent. And so yeah, that was my skincare routine. It's pretty simple. I enjoy all of these products a lot, whether they're affordable or high-end. I think for the most part, uh, in each category, the affordable is very similar to the high-end. So if you are enjoying that one, I think transitioning to the higher-end product would be pretty easy. And then again, if you wanna stay on the more affordable side, I think the affordable products work really well and I have repurchased a bunch of them. So if you've enjoyed this video and you want to hear more from me about skincare, definitely comment down below some of your skincare favorites, some of your thoughts on these products. Uh, and if you like this content and you want to see more from me, uh, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to put out more content. I filmed <laughs> two videos yesterday that I just really didn't like, so I'm going to try to be refilming them this week. Uh, so hopefully these will be out soon. Um, and I hope you have a great day or night or morning or whatever time it is. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.